welcome to the Made by Mumino Knitting podcast. My name is Catherine and I'm coming to you today from Mönchengladbach in Germany, which is kind of halfway between Dusseldorf and the Dutch border. And I live here permanently with my partner, um, Anastasios, and um, he puts up with my enormous yarn collection. So happy days. <laughs> So welcome to you if you're a returning viewer and a really warm welcome to you if you've just found me. You can find me also on Ravelry and Instagram as Mumino, here on YouTube and on Ko-fi as Made by Mumino and I also have an email address uh, madebymumino uh, at gmail.com. Today I'm going to talk to you about some really lovely finished objects, well I think they're lovely anyway, um, some whips that I'm working on, some future knitting plans, and I apologise for any outside noise. I think that one of my neighbours is working on his motorbike. <laughs> There's nothing I can do that, uh, do about that, so we're just going to have to live with it. Um, we're also going to do a little update today on the mal that I'm running at the moment, which is the Made by Mumino Thrifty Mal which is all about saving money and reusing what we've already got and working on existing whips. Um, yeah, so we'll do a little bit of run, a run through of that because I've got some new prizes to add to the prize bundle and I just want to introduce you to the lovely yarn that I've picked up. First of all, um, what is behind me? Uh, so the blanket often changes. <laughs> This week it's a beautiful patchwork quilt that my mum made for me and please correct me if I'm wrong mum but this might have been one of the first uh, or if not the first quilt that you actually finished all the way through and my mum really lovely really kindly made this for uh, when I went off to university and um, we'll talk, won't talk about when that was but it was quite a while ago. It's quite traditional in quilting to make a quilt for a significant date or a significant event or some kind of important life stage or, or whatever. So yeah, my mum made this for me. And it's quilted not in an all over quilting method, but in a tied method, um, which is very traditional as well. Um, and uh, yeah, it's really, really beautiful. I love the colours of this. It's a small single quilt. So um, it kind of lurks around the living room usually as an extra blanket um, if we need it uh, during the evening or whatever. So it's really, really beautiful. What I'm wearing, Next, um, not knitwear. It's very warm here at the moment, so uh, I've gone for a non-knitwear option. This is a hinterland dress that I made a year or so ago. I made this in viscose. It's a really, really popular pattern um, from So Liberated, and it's fantastic for hacking, for making your own, making part of it as a top or a skirt, or it's a really, really versatile pattern. Because this fabric is very busy, I opted not to do the buttons down the bodice or down the the, uh, the skirt part. Um, I didn't think you'd be able to see them. Uh, and I think I was probably, that was probably a good decision. It's also as a newbie um, sewer, if, if, if you've never really done any dressmaking before, it's also a little trick to avoid having to sort of match up a, a, a very patterned fabric which can be quite tricky if you're just starting out, if you care about such things like pattern matching and things. I'm not I'm not a very proficient sewer, so uh, so that was definitely a good option for me as well. But I made this in, a, like I said, a viscose fabric and it's very cool and comfortable to wear. Um, yeah, one of my favourite dresses. Um, so that's that. What else to talk about? Uh, yes, next. Oh, I don't know where my head is. Finished objects. So my first finished objects are hats, one of which you've already seen as a whip in the previous episode. Oh, I forgot to mention, I put chapters down below. So if you want to skip through any parts that you're not, not interested, please do feel free. Um, I promise I won't feel a thing. <laughs> okay, finished objects again, we'll, start, we'll try again. This is the watch cap from Pearl Soho. It's a free pattern. It comes in, I think, four different sizes, maybe five, but certainly four. And it's quite a versatile pattern. I think it was originally written for DK weight, but you can kind of fudge around with the cast on figures and everything to, to make it your own, depending on what scraps you've got left. One of these hats for me usually takes about 100 grams of, uh, well, just under 100 grams of yarn, depending on how long you make it. 
This particular one is made in Atelier Citron Tasmanian Tweed, which is a beautifully soft and squishy yarn. It is a merino, but it's got a little bit of viscose in it, a little bit of plant fibre, which just makes it a little bit more silky. And it's very, very soft and squishy. Left over from a Stockholm slipover that I made uh, earlier in the year. Uh, so I had a little bit left over, so I thought I'd make a little watch cap to go into the gift pile. This is a free pattern, so um, I cast on 140 stitches, which I think is the adult medium, but it does come out quite large. So um, when if you are casting this on, just double check after you've done a few rows that you're happy with the uh, with the size of it. Put it on a, a spare cord or, or something, because I've cast on a few of these in the past um, and they do come out quite big, in my opinion. Uh, so this is the first one I've made destined for the gift pile. I also finished another one. This one is made in, what is a line there from when I was blocking it? Anyway, this one is made in West Yorkshire Spinners, the Croft Aran in colour 1010 Rewick, something like that. I'll write it down here. Write it down in the comments, sorry. I can't talk today. <laughs> I'll write it down in the, in the description. This one, as you can see, has come out in a very similar size, but this is 120 stitch cast on, on uh, four millimeter needles, which is a US six. And this one's on 3.25 millimeter needles, which is a US three. <laughs> so you can see how versatile this is if you just mess about with uh, with the number of stitches that you cast on but this is a beautiful rustic well not rustic semi-rustic yarn it's it's pure wool shetland wool um it is a little bit more rustic than the other one but it's still very soft and squishy and it'd be really really nice to wear i love the detail in this pattern of how they the the um the reductions happen so it creates kind of like this swirl effect it's just such a pretty pattern. It also comes with a um, a pattern for some, what do you call them, hand warmers, mittens, um, fingerless mitts. Uh, yeah, hand warmers. I don't think I've ever made them, but it looks they look really cute. So I would be tempted to make a matching pair if I had enough yarn left over. But as this usually I tend to make with scraps or special skeins, um, it's really, it's not really come up. So um, yeah. Two watch caps destined for the knit part, the gift knit pile. Happy days. <laughs> okay, the next uh, finished object that I've got to talk to you about is oh, I'm so happy about it. I'm just really sad that I can't wear it today because it's still a little bit damp because it, it's been blocking over the weekend. It's this. Oh. Let's sort this out a little bit. There we go. This is the Meadow Flower Wrap from Kleinisch Kaltenlieber. And it's gorgeous. I'm in love with this pattern. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just so beautiful. So feminine. The designer Sharon, she's got such a beautiful aesthetic. I've linked her Instagram um, down below. Go and have a look. She made some beautiful patterns. She's a German designer, but she often publishes her patterns in English as well. I test knit this in English. Um, this will be, I'm not sure when this will be out. The deadline for the test knits is the 18th of September, I think. So I'd be surprised if it's out too much after that. Um, have a look on Instagram at the examples that have already been made, but it's just, oh, it's just so beautiful. Um, it's made in a kind of like a heavy fingering yarn, I would say. Um, the designer used a slightly different yarn to myself, but a similar weight. I opted for Woolen Twine. Woolen Twine is run by the lovely Hula up in Hamburg, and she makes very, very beautiful, very um, ethical, um, thoughtful, sort of environmentally conscious yarn, and it's just so beautiful. This is a 75% BFL 25% linen mix, or is it 80-20? One moment. 
I can't remember. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is. 75.25 with, uh, with some linen in it in the colourway Hickory. I don't think she's got any more of it. I don't know if she has any plans to make any more, but I'm very, very glad that I picked up the last four skeins of this. <clears throat> so this pattern is knit bottom up which honestly normally I don't really tend to go for I tend to avoid them because I have it in my head that the fit is going to be more difficult so I just need some tea very quickly <clears throat> there we go um yeah I think it's going to be more difficult with the fit but that wasn't the case at all this has got negative ease in it it's knit on a 3.25 no I knit mine on a 3.5 millimeter needle So the designer really helpfully gave a range of possible needle options, anything between a three and a four millimeter needle um, to swatch with. And I found that a 3.5 millimeter needle was perfect for this yarn. And the gauge was 22 by 36. I misspoke in my previous episode and I said 26 by 36. I don't know what I was thinking. <sighs> so it's a really nice drapey fabric that, that is produced by that. And as I said, this is knit bottom up, but as it's a wrap, you start at the widest point because you've got this crossover and you're instantly beginning to reduce. So it just feels like as you're going along, the knit just gets quicker and quicker. You begin by knitting these straps or the ties that to go around the waist. Immediately you start um, introducing the dip stitch of uh, these little flower motifs all the way up. The, uh, the rate of the dip stitch is less on the ties as it is on the main body and the sleeves. It's just so pretty. So you knit up to where the sleeves are gonna be in, uh, joined on. You knit the sleeves separately from the bottom up. And then you attach the sleeves and begin doing these raglan decreases up to the top. Now, um, when you do this final bit, it's an I-cord bind off. There were a few more reductions that I did skip over. There were three reductions that I didn't want to include because I didn't want it to come too high up my neck. I'm quite short in the body and I wanted it to sit at the base of my neck. And I was quite happy with the fit before the, um, the final couple of reductions um, around the collar there. So that's that. The one thing I did have to do though, this last stage, was crochet a crab stitch around the bottom. I can't crochet. <laughs> so I had to learn. <laughs> um, the designer really, really helpfully included several links to different tutorials and videos to help with different elements of the uh, of the cardigan. And um, I found another video as well, uh, to, additionally to the one that she found for doing the crochet bit that was for real novices. I, d I can't crochet, I'm so embarrassed about it. I must learn how to do it. Maybe when I go back to the UK, in a few weeks time I'll, uh, I'll sit down with my mum and, and learn to crochet but um but yeah this uh this was a challenge but I did it <laughs> don't look too closely it's not the neatest in the world but it's done and it's on there and I cannot wait to wear this but it's just still a little bit damp around this part here so I'll probably have to wait until this evening to do some pictures uh wearing this but it's just so beautiful isn't it really lovely it's so delicate the designer did a, the original sample in a beautiful um, dusty pink color which is honestly one of my go-to colors but when i saw this particular yarn i just had to go for it because it's just such a gorgeous color it's just really really perfect um i didn't make any adaptations other than miss skipping the last two reductions on the collar um, I knit it exactly to pattern and uh, it's I knit the size XL which I believe is for a 117 centimeter bust um, but all the pattern details are linked down below so you're looking for zero or negative ease with this pattern just for it to be a really nice close fit and um, that's certainly what I've achieved I'm really really happy with the fit so um, keep an eye on my Instagram and hopefully in the next few days I'll have time to do a photo uh, of, of it of me wearing it if not it's gonna have to wait a couple of weeks but it'll definitely be before the deadline on the uh, 18th of September just because I'm going away on holiday 
and I'm going to Thailand and I don't really want to wear a woolly jumper to do a little photo shoot on the beach in Thailand because I think it's going to be a bit warm for knitwear. But there we go, that is the meadow flower wrap and it will be coming out soon and I'm in love with this. I'm so thrilled with it, it's beautiful, really really beautiful. So there we go. Okay, works in progress. I've got two to show you. Uh, one of which is rather mundane, but I thought I'd show you anyway, because it's another muscle bra, another gift knit that I'm doing. I just wanted to show you how it starts. So you do this little tiny circle and then build out from there. And it looks a little bit messy to start off with, but you, as long as you leave a reasonable tail, you can then use that to, to sew up the inside. Now it's really important when you're making a muscle bra to make sure this end is neat before you get to the decreases at the other end so that you've got enough space to get in there and, and sew it up. Otherwise it can be a little bit tricky if you leave it right to the end when you cast off. Um, so yeah, I've cast on another one to add to the gift knit pile and I was planning on using these two yarns and striping them but it's not going to work. There were a bit of a knitting sin. There were no labels. <laughs> I thought they were both a, sort of a four ply and they're not. One of them is a, definitely a DK. So I've ended up with quite a stiff fabric here. So I'm going to rip this out and start it again. But it's no matter. It's not, not much work involved in that. Um, but yeah, I'll do that later on. I'm not sure what these two yarns are. I'm pretty sure that this one is Alana Grosser Colorismo. Uh, which is now discontinued that I used for a pattern, um, used for a jumper for my partner. I'm not sure what this one is, not sure. I'll try and find out and if I find it, I'll put it down in the notes. But um, yeah, I don't know. Feels nice though. <laughs> so that's my handbag knitting at the moment, but it's gonna be frogged. My other work in progress is much more exciting. So I'll put a picture up here of the new test knit that I'm working on. This is the winter doodle sweater. <clears throat> Although I have, um, on the pattern it does say holiday doodle sweater, so I'm not sure which one the designer's going with. So um, I, I, I think I'll stick with winter doodle sweater though, because that's what she's used in all of her Instagram posts. As you can see, it's an all over colour work jumper. Jamie of the Pacific Knit Co um, makes the doodle decks. You've probably seen them. Little decks of cards with um, loads of different motif charts uh, for doing colour work in a whole variety of different themes. I've got several of her uh, charts from the spring ones, the floral ones, uh, the mountain doodle, all sorts of different ones. And they're just gorgeous. I've made one of her holiday doodle cowls. Um, I made one last year as well. Um, and they're just really gorgeous, really fun, very addictive, really potato chippy knitting. And I signed up for this test knit because I thought it was loads of fun and I really want to make myself some sort of festive pullover. But I didn't really want to do all over colour work. Jamie was fine with that. She's absolutely fine with the knitters, the test knitting group, making any modifications as they see fit. You can do full colour work, partial, yoke, just around here. You, mix and match whatever you want, use as many different colours as you want. I wanted something quite, not plain and simple, I don't think plain and simple and colour work really go together, but quite a muted version um, that was quite sort of like a Scandinavian vibe with, with quite sort of muted colours. Um, and I wanted to stick to a two colour palette as well. I was thinking about maybe some John Arben, um, some Jana Delic, something like that. And I talked about it in my last episode. Oh, by the way, thank you so much for all of your lovely comments and things on my last episode. I really enjoyed it. And it was so nice um, chatting to, to people in the comments. So yeah, thank you for that. Anyway, based on your comments, I had a brainwave. I already have had some perfect yarn for this project. It's in here. And the bag is a bit of a clue because I picked this up in Oslo when I was there earlier in the year. This beautiful, big, squishy project bag. But I have quite a few skeins of this. This is Hillesvog Varda. Any Norwegians watching or anybody who speaks Norwegian, please feel free to correct my pronunciation. I never mind at all. 
But this is the blue grey colourway and it's a Norwegian fur sheep. So it's quite a dense yarn. It's a two ply. And it's not very tightly spun. Really, really nice yarn to work with. I've, I've, I have already cast it on and I'm enjoying working with it so far. It's uh, 100 grams is 200 meters. So it's, it's, it's very much a DK. And it's blooming really nicely when it's blocked. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be using. This was supposed to be a colour work jumper for my partner and I asked him if he minded if I used it for my product instead and he said no he didn't mind <laughs> but I feel really guilty. I might have to get some more yarn. Oh dear, what a shame. <laughs> anyway, to go with this, I went to my local yarn shop and the owner, my friend Iris, she helped me pick out this pier gint to go with it. And this is in the colourway 2511. It's kind of a nice warm beige colour. And I think they go together beautifully. It's also a Norwegian yarn, obviously from Sandnesgarn. Um, also, I think a two ply as well by the look of it, but just a little bit heavier than this one, just a tad heavier. This one comes out at 91 metres per 50 grams. So it's slightly heavier than this one but it's, it's knitting up fine. I was really happy with the swatch. So as you can see, I'm going for a very muted palette. I'm gonna stick with just the color work in the yoke and also in a theme. I love snowflakes. I really love anything with snowflakes on it. So I'm just sticking with that. And here is my yoke so far after casting on yesterday. How cute is that? I'm so happy with this. Oh, so cute, right? Okay, so if you've been watching this for uh, watching my podcast for a while, you know that um, I like to start after the ribbing and then go back and add the ribbing afterwards. But as this is a test knit and I, I wanted to do it in the way that the designer suggested, I did make a slight modification for my size. I cast on fewer stitches and then the first round after the ribbing, I did a, an increased round just to bring it back up again. So because I wanted it just slightly snugger around my neck there. The other slight thing that I change well not change but my technique when I'm um, casting on from the ribbing is let's say that the cast on is 100 stitches I will cast on 101 stitches transferring the last stitch to my left hand needle when I'm joining to knit in the round and then knitting the first two stitches together using the tail of the yarn um, I do this as well when I'm knitting top down socks. I think a few other um, few designers actually mentioned it in the pattern that Nancy Wheeler actually might mention that in her sock patterns. But it's a really nice way of making that join at the back there as neat as possible. And you can just kind of sew it together to make it extra neat when, when, uh, when you're done. So um, I need to stop saying so. I say it all the time. I've even got a note on my laptop not to say so and I still say it. I do know I do it. <laughs> okay, the designer really helpfully um, lays out exactly how many increase rounds there are going to be and how that fits into the doodle pattern so that you can select the right charts um, for each stage of your knit. Um, you need to try and have your increase rounds so they're in a plain a single colour round and that so far we've got it it's, I've, I've worked it out, I think, pretty well. She also offers the charts in two sizes, so um, a 24 stitch repeat or a 12 stitch repeat, depending on what your stitch count is going around. And the pattern is so clear about what you need to do and when, and it's perfect for, it doesn't matter what your approach is. So I like to, said it again. <laughs> I like to um, kind of wing it a little bit and just get to the next stage and see which motif I fancy doing. Um, and so far, so good. It, it seems to be working out really, really nicely. So I've done two repeats of the motif, as you can see. And I'm really, really happy with it so far. 
I think there's going to be at least another three, maybe four repeats of the motif until I need to split for sleeves. And then I'll make a decision about whether or not I do a motif on the body as well. But we'll see how much yarn I've got left. This has got a really long deadline on it. It feels weird to be knitting on a, uh, a Christmas jumper in the middle of summer when it's 30 degrees outside. Also, I might take this on holiday with me. <laughs> so I'll be knitting on it in Thailand as well. Which, which seems bizarre. But anyway, um, it's got a really long deadline. I think the 29th of October uh, with a planned release date on the 1st of November, I believe. Um, so yeah, you've got plenty of time to think about it if you'd like to get your hands on this pattern. And I am loving it. I love the festive season so much. I love winter. I'm very excited about this. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything else to say. This is knit on 3.75 millimeter needles, which is uh, f US five. <laughs> One day those numbers might stay in my head. I don't hold out too much hope though. <laughs> so that is my second whip. It's another sweater and it's going to be quite a big one. I love colour work so much. And these snowflakes are just bringing joy to my heart. Oh, I'm quite resentful of having to stop knitting on it in order to work on this. Also, you'll notice I have my snowflake cups and my little snowflake stitch marker progress keeper there as well. There's a theme. I'm loving it. It's August, but in, in my heart, I'm ready for it to start getting colder, I think. That's that. Okay, I'm now going to talk a little bit about acquisitions. I went, oh, right at the beginning of the video, you will have seen some footage of my local park. It's about a two minute walk away and I often go there for a little wander around at some point during the day if the weather's nice, just to get a bit of fresh air. But I also went on a little trip, a little day trip to Cologne, to Cologne. I'm very lucky. I have a, um, a rail card that means I can travel anywhere in Germany for less than 50 euros a month, which is fantastic. And Cologne is, less than an hour away on the train for me. So I hopped on the train a couple of weeks ago and uh, went to a new to me yarn shop called Garn Store. And there's some footage of the shop at the end of this podcast. Oh my goodness, it was an Aladdin's cave and the owner was so unbelievably welcoming, Jamie. He was just, oh, he was wonderful. And he had so many different yarns there, a lot of which I'd never seen before. Most of it I had, but but there were sort of some really interesting fibres and um, some vegan yarns and things. Oh, it was, I had the best time. If you're in Cone, I totally recommend it. The details of the shop are down below. There are several yarn shops in, in Cone, um, but uh, I only had time to go to that one and um, it was well worth it. I really do strongly recommend that you go and visit Jamie in Garn Store if you're there. But I was a very, very naughty person and I picked up, you will have seen these already if you follow me on Instagram, <sighs> three skeins of Valk. This is a locally, well, German, I'm not sure where it's actually made, but it is made in Germany. Um, hand painted, hand dyed yarn and it's oh, gorgeous, really gorgeous. This one here is the Lux DK, which is 75% alpaca, 20% silk, 10% cashmere and colorway twister. And it's a DK and it's so, so squishy. This is going to be a hat for me. I'm gonna make myself a nice squishy ribbed hat with this. It's gorgeous. <laughs> I wish you could touch this, it's so nice. Uh, this is the Cottage Merino in Colourway Provence and it's 100% uh, superwash merino, 360 metres for 100 grams. And it's blowing out a little bit. The colours are a little bit darker in real life. But my partner has requested a hat with this one as well. He loves his brightly coloured hats. <laughs> now this one is Oasis colorway oasis in cozy merino and i think it's a single 
Uh, it's 100% wool superwash merino, 366 metres for 100 grams. It's really soft and squishy and so saturated. Again, it's the colours are a little bit deeper than it's showing here. But this one is for you. <laughs> this is one of the prizes for, or will be one of the prizes for the Made by Mumino Thrifty Mail. So just to run through the Thrifty Mail, I mean thrifty in the British English sense that to be thrifty is to be money saving in a, in a really positive way. Um, so reusing things, repurposing things, using things we've had around for a while. Um, any whip is welcome. It doesn't have to be a finished object. You can already have been working on it um, before the start of the, uh, the make along. It's absolutely fine. Any craft is welcome as well. My dad made some rope knotted boat fenders as an entry for the, for the mall. So um, anything is welcome. Um, as long as you've saved as much money as possible. Uh, maybe the yarn was gifted to you. Maybe it's ripped back from a previous project. Maybe it's uh, an embroidery kit you've had for donkey's years and uh, the, maybe it was a gifted pattern or a free pattern. If you want some inspiration, I've made a little bundle of free patterns in my Ravelry group. So that brings me on to how you can enter. Firstly, you can enter on Instagram by using the hashtag mbmthriftymal24. Just to be on the safe side, tag me as well to make sure that I see it. Um, like I said, whips are welcome as well. You don't have to have a finished object by the deadline. You can also enter through the Ravelry group. Just post a picture of what you're working on in my Ravelry group. The details are, and the link is uh, down below in the show notes. Um, and have a look and see what other people are making as well, because there's been a wonderful variety of different sorts of projects. Some that I have now added to my favourites or to my, my queue as well. There's some been, been some really beautiful projects. You can also enter if you don't have access to Ravelry or Instagram by directly emailing me. So email me your pictures to madebymumino at gmail.com. It would be really, really helpful if you could let me know if you're happy with me sharing um, those photographs publicly um, just because I plan to do a little gallery of uh, entries when we come to the end of the mall. So the mall started on the 1st of July and it will end on the 30th of September and all of your scrappy thrifty as in money saving projects are welcome and if you're not sure just message me and, uh, and I'll tell you whether or not it's suitable but the answer is probably going to be yes. <laughs> There are three prize bundles so far, possibly four. I haven't decided how I'm gonna split it up yet. So this is going to be one of the prize bundles and it will come with a pattern and maybe some stitch markers or something if I can find some to pop in with it. This is another one of the prizes and this was gifted from the We Yarn Company, the lovely Ross over in Nijmegen in the Netherlands. This yarn is just, I can't, I can't even tell you how gorgeous this is. It's the his Yaldi Yak sock base and the colorway is the Gay Agenda. And it's 70% Merino, 20% Yak, 10% Nylon. And it's beautiful. It's silky and drapey and gorgeous. And I have another skein in a different colorway to make my partner another hat. His colors are just insanely gorgeous. <laughs> so go and check him out if you haven't already. Um, seen his uh, his work but um yeah really really special yarn thank you so much ross it's such a generous gift uh, to the podcast so this is one another prize bundle um which will come also with a pattern and some other goodies the last yarn is two commercial sock yarns but they're just too nice not to include so we've got a merino self-striping yarn from lana grosser and we have another one from Lana Grosser, but this one with a bit of yak in it. They're such nice yarns and I just, I'm so sad to be giving them away because it feels weird to give yarn away. <laughs> but these will also come with a pattern and some other goodies as well. 
Um, we've had two patterns really kindly donated to the podcast. Um, the first one was from Nancy Wheeler of the Knit Sip Happy podcast, and she's really kindly said that she will gift um, a pattern of a viewer's choice as one of the prizes. And also the lovely JC at uh, the Bluebird Pine Shop, for whom I've done a couple of test knits in the past. Um, she's very kindly said that she'll gift a pattern to one of the winners as well. So um, yeah, the third pattern in the third bundle, haven't decided yet, um, but watch this space. I'll let you know when we have a, when I have an idea of what that third pattern will be. So yeah, that's the Made by Mumino Thrifty Mill. And I'm really looking forward to seeing more entries because there've been so many so far. And um, yeah, it's just really lovely to see you all reusing and repurposing your uh, bits and pieces, mostly knitting, but some crochet and other crafts as well. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Okay, um, future knitting plans very quickly. So yes, I bought this in Stephen and Penelope, but as you will remember, if you watched the podcast episode when I was in Amsterdam, I bought two skeins of this. And the, I couldn't say at the time, but the reason for buying two skeins was one was a birthday gift for my mum. And that went off to her last week and she now has it so I can talk about it. But we're going to cast on something together. So this is La Bienna May's um, Super Sock. And it's uh, just a 75-25 um, percent mix. I'm trying to work out how to say the name. Hegelia? Hegelia, I think. Something like that. But it's just beautiful. I would call this a duck egg blue. <laughs> But it's so gorgeous. But my mum and I want to cast on something together. So I'd really like your ideas if possible. I have a couple of ideas for little shawlettes and things like that, but I'd love to try something from a new designer. So if you have any ideas of something that I could uh, cast on and make with this special skein, I'd be really, really grateful. So if you could just comment down below and let me know what you think. So there we go, future knitting plans. I think that's about all I want to talk about today. Yeah, so as I said at the end of the podcast um, episode today, I'm going to take you on a really short tour of, of Köln and um, Garns, the Garn store that I went to, which was, again, oh, it was just gorgeous. I didn't have so much success actually filming in Cologne, sadly. Um, it was very, very hot. There were a lot of people there and everything seemed to be covered in scaffolding. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't have much success, but there are some uh, nice shots of the cathedral itself. Um, uh, Köln is very much a city that people visit at all times of year, but mostly in uh, the, the, the winter season for the really world famous Christmas markets, which absolutely are incredible. Um, but I think therefore they do a lot of building work and preparation work during the summer months in preparation for that big influx of visitors and tourism during the um, the Christmas period. So I didn't have so much success filming, but um, but I still got some lovely film of the uh, yarn store, which is probably what you're mostly interested in. Anyway, thank you so much if you've made it to the end. Um, I really appreciate you spending your time with me today. I'd love it if you could like and uh, if you enjoyed this episode, subscribe to my uh, my channel because it really helps to push my um, video out to, to new, uh, new new members of the knitting community. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again very soon. Take care. Bye. Thank mm -hmm. you.